Hey guys, welcome to another amazing episode of Evil Walks Spiritual Talks Halloween Edition. I'm your host, Anona, and this month is going to have crime episodes featuring special guests. Um, I guess we'll be talking about stories that you probably haven't heard of and hopefully will get you into the spooked out mood. Okay, and um, I'll be like blind reacting as well. So I'll be almost just as surprised as y'all. Like I'm going to hear a little bit of it, but uh, essentially I'm going to be just as surprised as y'all going to be. Um, and with that being said, we have our very first guest. His name is Cam and he'll be going. Um, he's going to give us like, you know, a really, really good one. Because like I said, I heard a little bit of it. So um, I'm going to allow him to introduce himself and then just jump right into the story for y'all. Okay. What's up, you guys? How are you? My name is Cam, and I am very honored and psyched to be on this, you know. You know, true crime is something that I've been, you know, very interested and intrigued in since I was little. Don't quote me on this, but I get real deep into it, and no, I am not sick at all. I just find this very interesting, just like your dearest host, Sonona. So, yeah, the crime story that I have for you guys today involves two people. Um, it is very unsolved, to say the least. Like, But if you're smart, you know, you could put two and two together and, you know, figure out what happened for yourselves. But it's still considered to be an unsolved case. And the events that took place are kind of horrific and they take place in San Diego, California at the Spreckles Mansion. So it's two people we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about the death of a six-year-old boy named Max and the death of his stepmother, Rebecca Zahawi. So to start off with Max, he is the son of Dino Romano and Jonah Shagnai. So, um... Yeah, Jonah was like a successful CEO of a pharmaceutical um, company in San Diego. You know, he's self-made billionaire or whatever. And him and Dina, they were married for a little bit. You know, they had their son, Max, but they divorced. And he ended up remarrying, I believe in 2008, to a woman named Rebecca Zahawi. But, you know, of course, they still share custody of Max or whatever. Um, it's not much information based on why they got divorced, but hey, they were able to share custody. So on the afternoon of July 11, 2011, while they were staying at the Spreckles Mansion, it was Rebecca and her sister, Zena, who was 13 years old. They reported that they heard a loud thump. And what had happened was Max was riding his scooter in the house, apparently, and he fell from the second story railing inside the house and he hit the glass chandelier and it fell. So when they came out to see him, they found him um, with fractured facial wounds and a broken spinal cord. Now, Rebecca's um, events of that story are different than the first responders. She claims that Max was still conscious and very much uttering the words ocean, which is the name of the dog, but he was like saying like, oh, ocean. But, you know, when first responders get there, they say he's been unresponsive. Like he wasn't breathing, none of that. So they had to put him um, in the ICU. And that was on July 11th, 2011. So immediately, you know, the family comes. Jonah calls his brother, Adam, who we'll talk about later. And Dina calls her twin sister, Nina. And, you know, she flies her out crazy. They share similar names. Crazy. But, yeah. So, you know, they're questioning Rebecca, like, how did this happen? What happened? This, that, the third. And she claims that, you know, she didn't even see him, you know, when he fell. She just found him, her and her sister did. So they immediately called the police. And um, what Dina did was she hired a PI. Okay, so Max's mother, Dina, 
had hired a PI to look into Max's fall because it just seemed very suspicious to her that he was riding a scooter and just fell. But there's some that theorize that maybe he slipped on the carpet upstairs and fell, or maybe the dog came and tripped him up, which goes back to why he was saying the word ocean, the dog's name. But Wait, there are the um, dog's name is Ocean. Yeah, the dog's name is Ocean. Okay. Yeah. What a weird name to name yeah. a dog, though. But <laughs> it's, it's pretty. Di- it's pretty different, though. It's pretty different. You know, I wouldn't have thought of that, but hey. <laughs> But there are some that theorize a very minor few, and I'm not saying I feel this way. There are some that feel like maybe Rebecca knows more than what she's telling. Suspicious. Mm. But me personally, I don't feel that way. <laughs> but then, you know, back to what I said, Jonah flew in his brother, Adam, and Dina flew in her twin sister, Nina, into town, and they had dinner the night of the 12th. But as soon as dinner was wrapped up, they came back to the hospital to check on Max. So after that, Rebecca's sister flew back home to where she was. And I believe Dina and Nina stayed the night at the hospital with Jonah. So that left Adam and Rebecca at the Spreckles Mansion. Now, the Spreckles Mansion is a very big mansion. You guys can look it up for yourself. I mean, this mansion is sick. It's nice. So... Um, I'll give you a description of it, but of course you can look it up yourself. It has 10 bedrooms and 11 bathrooms. And the house is kind of split into two. Like you have kind of like the front end of the house and you have the back end of the house. Mm -hmm. Rebecca stayed in the back end of the house while Adam was in the front end. So on the early hours of July 13, 2011, Rebecca's body was found hanging from the the second story um, railing. And the way her body was, was she was hanging upside down, but her hands were tied and her feet were tied. But the rope was so long, it was tied to the bed in the bedroom from the balcony that she was at. And also she had blunt force trauma to the head, apparently. And she was nude as well. So So Adam... Not he, because we're not making no assumptions. But no assumptions. No assumptions. <laughs> but um, so essentially, she was hanging from the bed, like she was hanging from the bed, and would have been hanging off the balcony from like a bar from the bed. So like the bed exactly. didn't drag all the way to the end of the room or anything. It just stayed in place. Like she stayed in place. Like, I know. I wish we had, like, pictures to show, but like I said, our viewers can look this up for themselves. Like, it's on Google, Wikipedia, however you say it. They even have, you know, pictures of the balcony, this, that, and the third. Because when I first heard the story, I was like, huh? But, you know, luckily for me, I viewed it from one of my favorite um, crime, uh, what do you call it? My crime makeup tutorial person, Bailey Mm -hmm. Serian. Yeah, shout out to her. But yeah, so they found her. Well, Adam found her body that morning around 7 Mm a.m. And the way he called the police was very eerie and suspicious. He says, yeah, got a girl hanging from the balcony. She's nude. Um, She's unresponsive. So yeah, it's at the same spot where you picked up the boy from the other day. First of all, and I'm like, I'm like the boy, your nephew, you mean and the girl, well, like girl? your sister in law, like that you know, what? like he couldn't sound more ignorant than he did in that moment. I just you thought that care? that was highly, highly suspicious. Like it didn't shake you that you just saw a dead body. But Mm. Let me shut up. <laughs> Let me mm. shut up, cause... Oh, but this is going to rattle you guys' shoes right here. So, apparently the story got out to the media, and helicopters swarmed the whole mansion. And mind you, Rebecca's body is still hanging, and they got cameras everywhere just taking pictures and videos, and it streamed on the news. And I'm like, her, but her yeah. Her body that's hanging. Is her body is hanging, streaming, streaming, nude. I mean, obviously they covered up the you know, the new parts of her body, but they're just showing it out there for the world to see. 
No one's decided, hey, let me cut her down. Let's put her on a stretcher in a body bag and take her somewhere. No. What's even sicker is her body was sitting there for 12 freaking hours. Wow. 12 hours from the moment that she was found. And when, <sighs> I don't want to be that person, but it just felt real racist to me because she's a person of color. She's Asian. Mm-hmm. And it just... It's the lack of care is what really got to me. Yeah, because San Diego, they arrived on the scene 12 hours after her body was found, and she was not covered. And then, here's also the kicker. They ruled her death a suicide. So, she's tied from a bed. It has her wrist or her hands and her feet tied. And her death was ruled a suicide. Yeah. Because that's how you go out, right? Whenever you commit suicide, that's the way to go out. Yeah, you... you Not you, suspicious at all. You tie your own hands and feet up. And yeah, you tie your own just... hands and feet up. And you take off your clothes. And you hit yourself in the back of the head. Mm. What a way to go out. Yeah. <clears throat> what a way. So, the knots that were tied... Oh, let's get into Adam. Before I jump into that. Adam is a tugboat pilot and you know yeah tugboat pilot basically you know a sailor Mm -hmm. and you know one of the um how do i say one of their talents is knowing how to tie up knots in a very unique and special way Mm -hmm. keep that in mind just keep that in mind so the way rebecca's hands and feet were tied they were slip knots and tugboat hitch knots so for the most part they are used in boating and this is commonly used in sailing and did she know how to tie any of these type of knots like was she a tugboat pilot as well no the funny thing is jonah said that whenever him or rebecca would ever go sailing she wouldn't know how to do anything of that nature you know she was just more so the sit back lay back kind of girl you know that was her type of persona you know she don't know how to do none of that not being sexist or nothing but the type of woman that she was right. it just wasn't her forte okay but she did this all herself okay cool definitely definitely did it all herself <laughs> and uh, san diego investigators are just basically humanizing adam into like basically being this martyr like this this upstanding guy and you know you know witnesses came out certain witnesses they claim that they heard screaming this that and the third and you know what the san diego police had the nerve to do they literally turned them around they're basically saying like your statements don't hold enough weight and i'm like these are witness reports and you're just throwing them up under the rug like it's nothing so you know Rebecca's family was pissed when they saw the footage of her body hanging and, you know, no one doing anything about it. So her family filed a civil lawsuit of $10 million claiming murder and named Nina, Dina, and Adam and that Rebecca was beaten and strangled. But, of course, Nina and Dina were dropped from that lawsuit because they had solid alibis. There was video footage of them at the hospital during the time. So, they're good. It's just leaving. Here's looking at Adam. So, her family determined that Adam was solely responsible and owed the family $5 million in damages. So, investigators come or whatever. They take away, you know, the computers, laptops, and Adam's cell phone. And what do they find on Adam's cell phone? Well, I'll tell you. They find on his browser history that he searched Asian bondage porn. Mm. Mm. Sonona, does that seem a little fishy? Mm. That seems a lot fishy to me. (laughs) And it's the night before her body is found. Bounded and hanging. Yes, bondage. Did I throw in the fact that she's an Asian woman, too? Like, mm. 
this this is so not when you put one so one plus one is starting equal two to me <laughs> i'm just saying in my opinion one plus I'm one just is saying equal two. i'm just saying you know so <laughs> yeah they determined that he was solely responsible and you know that he owed the family five million dollars in damages even though he still denies it and basically keith greer the attorney for rebecca's family had basically set up what happened from his point of view that rebecca was in the shower she was on her period of course because you know they knew that from the autopsy report but there was freckles of her blood where adam was on his side of the house so what they think happened was he confronted her when she got out the shower and you know he beat and strangled her and you know he did what he did you know the rest is there that's what the attorney believes they built this whole case and we cured the case you're like this makes sense yeah you're thinking to yourself this could have possibly happened but then again um the judge dismissed the case mm. and the verdict against adam will remain but lacks legal standing and his name is cleared and the san diego police department still claims there was no foul play because literally his fingerprints were nowhere near you know where she was no fingerprints no footprints no evidence adam is not guilty no shoe prints or anything no nothing here's the thing though they found boot prints they found boot prints but they never decided to test them out you know what I'm smelling, Sonona? I smell a cover up. That's what I was about to say. Like, so essentially, remember what I said some... earlier when I said that Jonah Shacknight is very is a very self made billionaire and CEO of a pharmaceutical company. And got this big mansion, yeah. By all means, he would do anything to protect his brother, as would any of us. But there's a fine, but there's a line to cross. There's a fine line to be crossed. This is- and yeah, no, I just, mm-mm. I have some very, very big opinions about this case right here. And then also, might I add, there was a painted message in her bedroom, and it said, she saved him, can you save her? Because that's not creepy at all. Who are you referring all. to? Like, who did she save? I'm assuming to? that they're talking about how she called the police when Max had took that fall, you know. In a way, she did. Some would save him. But he passed, in a way. didn't he? Yeah, he died. So she didn't save him, essentially. Save him. So, yeah. But that's just the eerie message that right. was posted on her wall. Okay. So this case went on for about seven, eight years. You know, it was just very frustrating. And I feel so bad for Rebecca's family, you know, because it's like you lost your daughter and yeah money can't fix it and i would just wish that adam would take time to like literally think about the things that he says because how he says things they come off very nonchalant and as someone that's a person of interest you want to look upstanding you don't want to come off as nonchalant because that's really killing your innocent meter not you giving these people advice how to how to do how to go about this i mean look if i'm a person of interest i'm gonna tell you what you need to know and what i did and didn't do i'm not just gonna be like yeah i was in the bedroom came outside found her hanging like i can at least put some emotion into that at least make it sound like i care even if i didn't he didn't even do that like damn nigga take some acting classes police call or anything yeah like take some fucking acting classes man (laughs) (laughs) at least act like you care real but yeah that's that's cam giving you guys pointers on how to become a killer and get away with it man look (laughs) i can't it's just so crazy how these are two unsolved cases in one house right in the span of three days see the 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 thing about it is the situation with the boy i believe could be an accident yeah it's a possibility that could be an accident but the situation with the woman that was no accident she did not in my opinion she did not commit suicide 
something else happened and there's definitely a whole cover-up that, that, that went on in my opinion there's a cover-up that went on because when you have money you can pay for stuff like that you can pay for a cover-up mind you they're in san diego too california i mean when you think of california you just think of money and then on top of that a ceo a pharmaceutical company mm -hmm. like come on now you're just you're just spitting out bread right and looking at it from jonah's point of view i'm not mm -hmm. trying to guilt trip him you know he lost he lost his wife he lost his son he probably didn't want to lose his brother either to the right. feds so I don't know what you guys want to do with that information. I know how my man mind is made, and I know how Sonoma's is made. Because we're here. We're <laughs> yeah. here. <laughs> we're here with it. But, yeah. And still to this day, as in 2022, he denies all of it. And no one's he's been still arrested sticking, for it. He's still sticking to that story. And no one's been arrested for this. No one's been arrested. That is... I don't, I don't know. Like I said, I would... Okay, little boy, that could be an accident. I could believe that's an accident. But for y'all to say that she committed suicide, but her hands and feet were tied in essentially a way that she did not know how to do, but he knew how to do. And somehow she hung herself. Now, uh, her being naked, well, she just got out of the shower. You know? So, okay. But... One plus one isn't equal in two with that situation. And there's no it's way not. that... That the police came there and really thought to themselves, oh, yeah, this is just, you know, um, this is a suicide. And then why would y'all leave her hanging for so long? 12 hours. Like, that's that's pretty messed up. Like, y'all supposed to... Because uh -uh. I did this other story where they uh, where they have removed this on my uh, Patreon. I this story about a little girl and they had removed her body um, like um, almost immediately before they even started taking pictures as they didn't want, you know, pictures getting leaked out to the news and everything. So it's like, why? And, but the little girl, though, uh, essentially was, was white, I do believe. Um, she was not of color. So, you know, sometimes do get treated differently. So, you know, just... Yeah, I mean, I'm going to just say it because we're not blind to this. We live in a day and age where we know the facts and facts are facts. The facts mm -hmm. are that us people of color get a different treatment than, you know, Caucasians do. And that's just the fact of the matter. Yeah. Because had this been on the other end, had this been Adam, I'm pretty sure Rebecca would be in jail, even if she didn't have anything to do with it. Yeah, she'd have been in jail already. They wouldn't have, it wouldn't have been no suicide. They were, if it was the other, the shoe was on the other foot, or whatever. Like I said, I don't know if Adam did it, but in my opinion, <laughs> he's guilty. But if the shoe was on the other foot, too she many had red on, flags. Way yeah. too many red flags. Yeah, she, 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 she would have been in jail already. This would have already been solved. But the fact that there's no footprints or fingerprints. Okay, he, whoever did it. <laughs> could have been wearing gloves but there are boot prints but did y'all measure them did y'all check them out did y'all look in their closet to see about nope. his shoes or anything like y'all all this just happened and we're not even i feel like we're not even treating it like it's a crime it's like y'all came in y'all like okay yeah this is what our mind like you know they be going through and sometimes they already have their mind made up and decide to not investigate any further Money is a powerful, is a powerful thing. Yes, yes. But that is um the story of Max Shagnai and Rebecca Zahawi. Yeah. So if you guys want to look it up and look any further into it, um, this is the most um updated version, I suppose you can say, um, of this story. But if you do want to, you know, dive a little bit deeper into it, you can, of course, go ahead and, and look it up. I'm going to post the names uh, in the description or at least the victim's names in the description. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and post onto the uh, Instagram of the same name. The Instagram is called Evil Walk Spiritual Talks. Um, same for the Facebook, Evil Walk Spiritual Talks. Because I know some people don't do um, Instagram and then some people don't do Facebook. Uh, so, you know, if you guys are interested, you can go ahead and follow those two <laughs> and, and be a part of the community so we can talk because 
I'm going on there and everybody's like, oh, I'm not getting a notification of this and this and that. <clears throat> but if you follow the page, you'll get the notification. You feel me? You'll Just that simple. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, that is our, that's our first guest on our Halloween edition. And I really hope y'all enjoyed the story. Cam, you got anything you want to say? Again, very honored, and I hope to be appearing in more podcasts with you because this, again, is just an honor. I feel like me and you met at a median on something that we really like and enjoy. Like, I love crime stories. And hopefully, with Sonoma's permission, you know, we'll do some more unsolved cases because I don't know. I don't know about you, but unsolved cases, they like, they, they chill me up. But it's like, I, I'm so intrigued by them. Because I'm like, how was this not solved? Yeah, we can we can do something like that. You know, have have Cam here as like our, our regular guest that gives us, you know, little unsolvedness. Because, you know, I do uh, the solved crimes. So, you know, have him come on and do mm-hmm. a couple unsolved crimes here and there. You know, that'll be fun. But um, do you... You want to give an Instagram or anything, or that's not you? Yes, I do. You can follow me at cruelcam underscore C R U E L C A A M underscore. And that is the end of our episode. I hope you guys enjoy it, and I hope you guys come back for another fun filled crime episode or spiritual episode, because I do spiritual episodes too, of Evil Walks Spiritual Talks. And I will talk to you guys then. Bye.